Hi all, Jin here, and I've decided to make this video on a whim since I've had a lot of people asking me for sphere advice all the time pretty much for a long time now. And especially now with the release of bonus spheres that you can craft, there's just now even more questions on what spheres should be crafted, even possibly hoarded, and who to put them on. Okay, so those familiar with my how to play vids, I do go over spheres and sphere recommendation for those specific units. But in this video, I'm going to just go over general overview of how I approach spheres and how I decide to use my spheres. I don't actually recommend hoarding spheres, obviously, since them just sitting in your cabinet collecting dust will just benefit nobody, ever. I do recommend saving good spheres. If it's not good for any of your current favorites or characters that you use a lot, then you can hang on to them for future characters you might pull in the future. So, basic guideline is, number one, is my character maxed and do I like the character and or plan to use them a lot? If no, then definitely just don't put any spheres on them, even bonus spheres, unless you want to have a nice support unit for your friends or something. Number two, do you have even any good spheres for them? Don't just slap on any sphere onto your faves just because they're the only spheres you have on hand. Best to wait for the ones that will fit them well, and this requires you to understand what benefits the character and what the character actually does so that they will be able to both use the sphere to its maximum potential and benefits. And then if a character meets both of these requirements, then go for it, no regrets. And then do keep in mind, spheres are just bonus anyways. They will help in situations, but they are definitely not necessary, so just don't take them too seriously. If you put them on someone by accident, whoops, it's not the biggest deal either. So let's go over characters you want to fully sphere with real spheres first. Usually the sphere a character gives will be great for them on themselves, like Gabran's sphere reduces party's brave damage taken by 10% and he already reduces by 30% with his unique buff, so making that a total of 40% will be very good and just approves upon what he does. But for example, take Van's sphere, which is 10% attack when at full HP. I mean, it's not bad. We know that Vaughn wants attack, so it's actually a decent sphere on him. It's not the worst sphere, but it requires his HP to be max. And since he's not a unit that can heal himself, he actually relies on others to keep his HP at max, so it's not the greatest sphere for him. And then I will go over on, like, for example, of what not to do. So, people who are familiar with my vids know my mistake with selfie. <laughs> All right. So let's just start from the top. Selfie benefits the most from Max Brave. She is also support. So giving a D sphere that boosts Max Brave to the party by 5% sounds perfect, right? Awesome. Let's just give her Beatrix's sphere that does just that. And then, oh shit. This D sphere requires a critical hit to proc the party Max Brave up. And the only thing that Selfie does that could possibly crit and rarely even does is her Brave Plus, her worst skill in her arsenal that you pretty much never use. So. Pretty much that D sphere would never proc and your party will never benefit from it. Alright, so mistakes were made, she will hardly ever be able to trigger that sphere and I finally was able to remove it recently with the addition of sphere removals. Now onto a better example of use for that sphere. Put it on another support that can easily proc it and make use of it, i.e. Lena. Lena does critical hits pretty much on all her abilities, unlike Selfie, and I also already have two other spheres on her. She first, she has her own that boosts party eye break by 10% for 3 turns when recovering own HP. She has HP regen obviously so she will practice all the time and she already boosts eye break to the party in general a lot so adding additional 10% is even better and proves upon what she does already. Then I have Sherlota's sphere that after granting a buff grants party members brave based on 10% of their eye break. So pretty much it gives brave regen to the party again. So, Lena already has Brave Regen, this is just stacks more on top of it, and she boosts Eye Brave so that Eye Brave amount of Regen is even more than it would be on other units. She also grants a buff on her skill 1 and skill 2 and EX, so then she can proc it all the time. And so now that I boosted the party's Eye Brave even more, then giving them even greater Brave Regen all the time, I can cap it off with the extra max Brave boost from Beatrice's Sphere to hold all that Brave and prevent capping as much. So this is an example of sphere synergy as well, when you're using different spheres to complement each other so that they work in unison and it makes the unit just a lot better. So this Lena is actually really good from just using spheres alone. So their bonus obviously Lena works fine without them but this just adds more oomph to her and really makes her excel. And this is just an example of my Lena. If you're having a Lena with poor Brave regen, she doesn't have the two C spheres that I have on her. Beatrix's D sphere will not be good for her 
boosting Max Brave to the party, of course it's always useful, but it's not going to be as useful as a D sphere that boosts party I Brave, for example, if you do not have the two C spheres that I already gave her. Because I Brave benefits Lena the most, and that's why you have to understand their kit and what they do. She also buffs a lot, and that's how you decide to give her these spheres. And I can give to another example of Sphere Synergy too. This is my actually my favorite Sphere Synergy unit. I've mentioned it before, Aphmau. So if you're not familiar with her kit, Aphmau has huge boosts to I Brave also. She's kind of like a, a super Lena, people were calling her. Since they both boost I Brave, they provide Brave Regen, they provide debuff evasion. They're very similar, but I, I still consider them different enough that you can have both of them and be fine. I've fully sphered both of them. I consider them different, obviously. So Aphmau does huge boosts to I Brave, takes tons of turns, three in a row on her turn after an EX, grants buffs on pretty much everything she does. So for her B Sphere, this increases Brave by 40% of I Brave after using ability. So this is Cell's Sphere. This is pretty much battering Aphmau after everything she does based on 40% of her I Brave. Aphmau will have huge I Brave due to her kit, so this means that's a lot of battery. And this will be after everything she does, literally. And with all her free turns, she'll be battering constantly herself over and over again. That's why this, this sphere works so well on her. Then I got her Penelope Sphere. This grants party 20% of individual int brave when granting a buff to the target once per turn. So pretty much this is Aphmau again. Using her I Brave boost, the whole party will be boosted with I Brave. And they will get 20% of brave every time Aphmau buffs a target. And she buffs a target every single time she takes an action. That means the party is continually getting brave. And then to top it all off, I have her own sphere. And this raises the I Brave even more by 10% for the party for six turns when granting a buff. And obviously she grants a buff all the time. So as they work together, her sphere boosts party I Brave and in turn boosts her ability to battery the party and battery herself. And she does it constantly. That's why I love it. And that's why this F mount will be a lot better than an unsphered F mount. Like so much more better. That's why like if you don't use spheres, it's just complete waste because they do, if they're used well, they help your unit a lot. But of course Aphmau is already really good so she doesn't need these spheres, that's why, that's why I just say use the spheres that you like on characters that will help them but it's not like a must so you don't feel like if you waste one by accident, uh, it's not the worst thing in the world. So obviously another favorite of mine, Sephiroth. I got him fully sphered of course and what Sephiroth does is just damage and he has fervent blow that does tons of brave hits but it's it's super weak he has the most uses of fervent blow so how do you fix him I fixed him with spheres so he has vein sphere when attacking a target afflicted with break increases brave damage dealt by 10% so this will increase all of his fervent blow hits by 10% the same with the clouds every critical hit he does will increase the brave damage dealt by 10% so this adds 20% to all his proven blow hits and then I, of course I have his own sphere on himself this increases max wave attack by 10% if HP is at least 50% max at start of last wave the reason I think this is fine for him even though he has no healing is because I would make sure that he has full health by the last wave anyways to proc his C50 one wind angel that requires him to be at full health so I'm going to proc this fear no matter what and a, a boost of max brave and attack by 10% is phenomenal. He needs mostly attack but the max brave does help especially if you have these other two spheres that increase his brave damage so that he can just dump like 150k pretty much on his fervent blow. Other examples of sphered units I've given, Sarah obviously a fave. So let me just go over why I did the things that I've done for her. So Sarah benefits a lot from attack. Aerith has one of the best fears for magic attackers. Obviously, you do not want to put this on a physical attacker. Sarah has magic, so it's fine. Raises her magic attack by 15% while HP is at least 80% of max. And how do I keep her at least 80% of max? I consider Sarah like one of the best supports in the game. I've used her so much, but she lacks healing. So how did I fix that? I gave her a C sphere from Rosa that gives HP regen to the party if you inflict break or attack a target afflicted with break. So pretty much you will have constant HP regen from Sarah. So in some situations, Sarah can be my only healer, which I have done in numerous occasions just because of this sphere. Otherwise you would have no healing whatsoever and you have to bring a healer. That's why Rosa's sphere and along with Porum's sphere, they're very valued because they do add HP regen that you can give to support units that do not have healing so that you can possibly get away without a proper healer. And last but not least, I give her her own sphere that boosts Max Brave. Sarah's Max Brave is, is generally quite low to begin with, and she inflicts debuffs all the time, so raising her Max Brave by 10% is a nice bonus. 
technically a better sphere would have been like attack and max barrier by 10% but I didn't have that sphere like I think that's what Yuffie's does so Yuffie's sphere would be even better for her but I don't have Yuffie so this works as well and obviously like I don't recommend fully spearing Sarah unless your Sarah is perfect because she relies on perfect arts pretty much that's why people don't realize how good she is because very little people actually have perfect arts for Sarah this is also me just flexing my arts also but anyways Sarah is just really good and has been a really good unit for a long time and has been slept upon just because the requirement for perfect arts on her is just awful it's just awful how long it took me to do that just it's just awful I don't want to wish that on anyone but you don't want to put spheres on a unit that you don't have properly built either so that's just an example another one obviously Fujin I love Fujin to death she deserves all the spheres she gets and I can just go over why I gave each of them to her so I give her her own sphere that reduces all enemy speed by 10% for six turns this goes well with her speed up to the party this makes the enemy slower and then she makes the party faster and so that together makes you able to set up launches easier because her EX launches so you want to include as many party members in each launch as possible so the faster your units are and the slower the enemies are then it's easier to do that and then I go ahead and give her Saz's sphere because I just wanted to add more utility to her obviously dealing a critical hit is easy so anybody can use this D sphere who has a D sphere so I just wanted to increase her attack along with the party's attack so that she's even a better support. She already has decent auras for a kind of non-support unit, but this just adds more utility to her as a support unit. And then I just did the exact same thing. I just doubled down on making her a better support unit. After granting a buff, which both her base skills do, it raises party's eye brave and attack by 5% for 3 turns. And so this just adds additional 5% on top of Saz's 5% already and she has Brave Regen so that the Eye Brave boost also helps her Brave Regen as well for the party. And here's an example of a unit that I'm still waiting for like the proper last sphere but I have already two spheres on her. So when inflicting a break or attacking target afflicted with break it raises the magic attack by 3% so it's pretty much 15% attack up for Garnet and since her attack is pretty weak already this helps to actually boost her damage because they made her potency is pretty weak because she has in peril and enchant she's not going to cap all the time unless you increase her attack so Cloud of Darkness Sphere does that for her and then this increases attack even more boosts attack by 10% for 6 turns when recovering your own HP and since it's 6 turns it's fine on her I've had that question before. She will definitely use her EX before 6 turns is up. Even though she has no HP regen, it's because 6 turns is long enough. She will always be able to keep this up and attack up for herself. Increases her batteries and such that are based on attack. And then increases her damage to be dealt, which also summons battery based on HP damage dealt. So just attack in general has always been good for Garnet. That's why I have 2 spheres that up her attack. And then so I'm just waiting on a D sphere that I have. I have very little D spheres, that's why I don't have anything for her. I don't give her Waka's even refined because I want to give her a proper D sphere first of all and since I don't have any D sphere even don't give her any D sphere yet. So if I had the right D sphere then she might be fully sphered right now but she's not and that's the reason that I don't just stick on anything randomly on a character that can't use it that well. And I have other instances of that mainly is this D sphere, <laughs> D sphere shortage because D spheres are the best and I don't want to give the characters I love just a, a crappy D sphere. I was actually considering 3 3 and hope just for lightning to use his D sphere that increases party attack and max brave by 5% when granting a buff. And lightning pretty much always grants a buff to herself. She also has brave regen, she benefits from attack, so her own sphere is great for her and she always inflicts breaks, of course. And this one, this raises physical attack by 15%. She always needs more attack, so I just maxed her attack like crazy with this. 15% is pretty much the highest boost you can give, and generally it's not going to be normal attack. It's going to be physical or magic attack, so do pay attention on which units you're putting them on. Antifa, number one waifu. I boost her attack, and I boost her max brave. Her own sphere boosts her attack by 10%. Squalls boosts her max break by 10% pretty much. And then I'm waiting on D sphere for her that would add more utility to her, give her and the party more attack. And I sphered her pretty early, that's why, uh, I mean, these two are some of my earliest spheres. And then Rosa, I also sphered pretty early. 
and her spheres worked. I loved her spheres, like Unisphere and, and Rosa. I loved it. It pretty much batteries the party. I mean, it's similar to uh, Pinello Sphere, but this batteries the party based on iBrave when recovering own HP. And since Rosa has HP regen and she boosts party iBrave by a lot, so this battery will be a lot for the party more than others would give since Rosa boosts iBrave by quite a substantial amount. And then after recovering HP, it raises party's eye brave and max brave by 5%. This just further boosts Rosa's auras even more, increases her eye brave and max brave, and she has HP regen, obviously. So I was just doubling down, making the unit shine more at what they do. So you're either using spheres to shore up weaknesses like Sephiroth, which I use to shore up his fervent blow because when he's hitting low damage on that, he's actually hitting pretty weak. But if he can hit hard on that, then it really, really ups his damage dealing potential and makes him a great unit compared to what most people think of him as a crappy unit. And then for example, Garnet, she needs attack because her potencies are low, so I give her attack to shore up the weaknesses on Garnet. But then for example like Rosa and others, I've just doubled down on what they're great at and then make them even greater at it. So it's really uh, you're up to you how you want to approach it. It also depends on what spheres you have, which approach you feel like taking. And then I'll go over just quickly the units I've used, the refined spheres. Let's go over first the refining of the spheres. If people are not too familiar with it yet or have not done it yet. So each event now, it seems like you can craft this, the characters related to that event. You can craft a bonus sphere of that character. You just go here. And then these are just lesser versions of the character's actual spheres. So this is Lena's HP heal initial all shorter. That's Lena's. This is Locke's sneak attack up longer. This is Waka's buff attack boost all. This is Vaughn's full HP attack up. This is Balthier's all break bonus up. And then this is Gabran's critical resist all shorter. So first of all, you do have to do one of each just to collect the rewards. Then after that, it's up to you how many you want to do of each. Most veterans will have quite a bit of crystals to be able to craft these. But if you start doing a lot of them, you will run out because there's obviously more events coming. There's more crafting. They will provide crystals obviously for each event, but just don't do more than you need. You can buy from the DP shop if you need, but there's always going to be a shortage if you just overspend for no reason. So you do want to make sure what spheres you're buying, just don't load up on them if you have no need for them. So generally the best spheres are going to be the ones that boost party auras and or attack and max brave, especially the ones that boost attack and max brave by a lot. So the best spheres I'd say from here are Lenus, since it does increase the party's eye brave and then it will need to go on a unit that has HP regen. And then Waka's, it boosts party max brave and attack by 2%, but then the proc of this is actually quite difficult with five or more buffs. So which unit has five or more buffs that they can give to themselves? There's not that many. So you do keep in mind that even though his boost is nice, not many units can upkeep this themselves at least. They might have to rely on other party members to do that. Just keep that in mind. And then I'd say like sneak attack up is great for units that already have like boost based on targeting enemies not targeting themselves so obviously lock and then like lion for example those units can make use of this vons is just a generic one if your hp is max raises attack by four percent so i think like for example if your squall is just spheres and you have like his full kit with bursts and everything just give him some attack you can just do three of those and give him that attack right there. So the thing is like you can just easily override them after two. So it's not a terrible thing if you want the attack right now. Just go ahead, make three of them, put them on Squall. Then that's it. He has at least now he has 12% attack up. I mean, that's way better than having zero. So just don't hesitate to go ahead and use these on units that you use a lot. I would say uh, Baltiers is pretty subpar. I mean, a unit that breaks a lot, you can give it to them. But I still have Bathier's original sphere unused. Cabranth is quite good, reduces party brave damage taken by 4%, but most units only have one B slot. So you're gonna wanna give this to uh, like a tank, for example, or somebody with a B sphere slot that you actually will never put anything else in there. And it helps just, it just helps to be there, reduces party brave damage taken by 4%. But don't go too crazy. This is just the first event. We'll have many more and many different spheres to come that you can make. So just the ones in general focus on boosting party auras and boosting attack that are easy to proc. Those are the best ones. And those ones you can go ahead before the event and you can just stock up on a, a couple extra of each before it goes away. 
I wouldn't hoard too much because there's just many, many of these kinds of spheres that come along. So you don't want to waste too many of your high crystals. Even though we start with a lot, it can go down pretty fast if you start just making a whole bunch of them. So let me just go over some of the ones I've used. I use Gabran's Sphere on himself, right? Reduces party brave damage taken by 10% for 3 turns. Perfect for him, I already went over it. But if you want to save this, then just go ahead and craft his mini version of his bonus sphere and put it on him. It's perfect. Then he'll have 34%. It's better than nothing. So any unit that you use, but you want to save their sphere for someone else, just go ahead and craft their mini version and put it on them and it will still benefit them nicely. And then I just went ahead, I had an A sphere. I just gave him more attack. It's fine. I'm not too worried about it. I probably won't sphere his A sphere with anything else. So I wouldn't give him any of my good A spheres. So just go ahead and boost his attack with Vine's mini sphere. It's fine. Same thing with Charlotte. I use her quite a bit, but she's not a favorite, so I'm not going to give her any of my good C spheres. So then I just slapped her on two of Lena's spheres because, first of all, Charlotte has HP regen and she has Brave regen, and I just wanted to increase the party's eye brave by 8%, pretty much is what two of them does. And this will increase the general party's Brave regen that Charlotte gives. And then I didn't give her Waka sphere because she doesn't have five buffs. She only has two buffs that she gives herself, so it wouldn't even be worth crafting it for her. And so I crafted that for Saz, who can actually have 5 buffs. So this is actually really good for Saz, because I didn't use Saz's sphere on himself. So I went ahead and made Waka's sphere for Saz, and it works perfect. Just an extra 2% for the whole party. Why not? Better than nothing. And if you like Waka, but you've used his sphere on someone else, then go ahead and make one for Waka and put it on Waka. The easiest option is to craft it for themselves if you don't want to use their own sphere for themselves, generally. You can use them as placeholders for characters you do like, and then when you have a, the right sphere, then you could just override it with the new sphere. It's a little bit wasteful to me, but it definitely works that way as well. It's just really up to you how you want to use spheres. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just about as long as the character benefits from it, if they're able to use it, and if you use the character enough, then that's all you need to know just before sphering that character. I do want to give a shout out to the Tonberry Troop. You go to their website, they have a full spheres location, go to tonberrytroop.com, then you go to resources hub, then you go to spheres hub, they have a full list of all the spheres and they have it organized really well. Shout out to the full Tonberry Troop, Inkwelder, Dreamy, Vaynovis, Teliote, they do a great job on not just the infographics but the website itself and they have a full section on spheres that can help you, guide you more than this video even can. And they also, on each character that they do infographics for, if you go to their infographics um, for the section of that character, they also list even more details on that character that includes sphere recommendations, so you don't even have to go to me for them. You can go to the Toneberry Troop website, and they also have their own recommendations and explanations as to why this character should have this sphere or that sphere, etc. So I hope you learned something, and I hope this video helps, and feel free to ask any questions in the comments, it's fine. I have no problems answering these questions, but hopefully this helps more people in general to decide what they want to do with their spheres. Because I do enjoy using a properly sphered unit, it just makes them so much better, it makes them so much more fun to use. You just feel like they are even more powerful when the spheres are working together so well. And that's one of the reasons I love using my Aphma, I love using my Lena, I love using my Fujin, etc. Just because they are just better versions of what they were originally, and I loved the way they were originally already. Alright, that's it for now. This ended up being quite a long video that I wasn't planning on making, but I think it's worth it and I will be a little bit late on my Machina Challenge quests, but it will come. So I will see you then. Bye.